More on this now with Carrie Fulton. She's an environmental and climate justice advocate. You just watched the story from Laura. Pretty exciting stuff. Uh, how do you view it? I think it's great. I think that the more that we have countries like China and others that are looking and saying, hey, it's more than just us humans on the planet, the better that we are. It's interesting. China has this ambitious com commitments under the 13th five-year plan. I was just reading up on it. Uh, the country's not just doing this, but they're, they're trying to better track global fishing fleets, improving the understanding of their behavior and enforcement of high seas fishing regulations, one of the key things here, overfishing. Uh, the Chinese Vice Premier Zhang Jiali uh, stressing the importance of developing new environmental technologies and using these to improve monitoring, transparency, and compliance. Talk to me about the importance of a country, the Vice Premier, such a high official talking about this, putting such an importance on this issue. What is, what's the signal that's sent to the rest of the world? It sends a signal that we want to protect the environment around us, and we want to make sure that we're not having poaching, that we're not overfishing, that we can protect our endangered species. And that's really important, especially when you have a president like the one here in the United States that is gutting our Endangered Species Act. So when we have a world leader that's ready to say, hey, let's make the real demands happen, let's make sure that we're putting in real guidelines and we're following a plan and we're sticking to it, that's super important for the global stage. So help our viewers, because uh, people have been fishing from the beginning of time, overfishing What's the impact it has on marine life? What does it it's do? It's huge. It's huge. When you overfish, you are taking away from the whole ecosystem. So every piece of our ecosystem, even the mosquito that annoys us, plays a particular role. And when we overfish and we overtake them, we are throwing off the whole ecosystem. We're not allowing our salmon or our turtles to have time to actually have their babies and it throws off their biology. And so then we have a shortage. And once we have a shortage, then we start to have an endangered species or we start to see issues where you have more farming of these different fishes so that we can have more of this product, but then that leads to all kinds of new issues, especially with contamination in farmed fish products. Yeah, you, and you talk about contamination and farming, of course, uh, when we talk about the other form of farming, pesticides, uh, fertilizers, that's been a huge problem. Uh, China's really working to curb that as well. Talk to me about some of the other steps you see that, that they're taking in terms of the environment. Well, I think it's really progressive that they are looking at not just how we create things, but what we're doing with them. And so we're, by reducing plastic pollution, that's a major, major thing that a country can do and working together with the whole community to say, hey, this is how we need to reduce this is the timeline. There's also the fact that they are looking at plastic pollutions. Now that impacts the whole entire globe. And we see those huge islands of plastic out there in the world. So the fact that you have somebody who's coming in and really ready to talk about plastic pollution in our oceans, that's major. Um, beyond that, even looking at how they're greening spaces, putting in more trees, and then using that as a catalyst for their partnerships with other countries around the globe and how they can create more ecological diversity within their countries. Carrie, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for coming and talking about a very important issue. Thank Appreciate you for having me.